An old Chinese proverb states, may you be cursed to live in interesting times. It suggests that periods of change, while often exciting, can also present unwanted and difficult challenges. And so it is in the fishing world. On the one hand, we're blessed with an ever-expanding array of new technology that helps us find and catch fish more quickly and efficiently than ever before. I just got there. A second ago, oh, they're twisting. And progressive fisheries management, including the stocking of game fish species, has resulted in some of the best fishing ever for walleyes, muskies, and smallmouth bass. Some folks feel these are indeed the best of times, and they'd be right. See, look, there they are, right there, Mr. Porter. See, we're just coming into the bait, and you can see these, these big hooks right here. Those are king salmon sitting underneath the school of bait fish. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I know that sound, that's the sound of success. What's really interesting is how soft the big fish like that hit it. I know, they come up in back of it and they just start smoking on it, boy. Today, on the edge, we take advantage of an angling bounty that nearly everyone can enjoy using a small boat or simply fishing from shore, especially in spring, shortly after fish are introduced to the system. Throughout the nation, fisheries departments routinely stock small, cool waters like strip pits with trout, turning these deep, clear gems into many hotspots for catching trout species. Not to build a self-sustaining fishery, merely to make fish easily available to catch, harvest, and enjoy a fresh meal, where fishing is easy, fun, and accessible to everyone. Hats off to your local fisheries folks for stocking small waters with trout they put them in, you take them out, and you just can't beat catching put and take trout. They're all over the country. You gotta do a little bit of research and your state's probably loaded up a lake pit or a pond near you. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. You know, there are a few times when you can go out fishing and pretty much be guaranteed a bite. I mean, in fishing, there's so many different variables, it makes golf look easy. You got seasonal changes, daily weather changes, plus you're chasing an animal with a brain that's programmed not to be eaten or caught. The whole time you're pursuing this quarry, you're on a mobile platform, throwing an imitation lure with a stick and a piece of line. Not to mention, the area you're searching is so vast it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Well, don't get discouraged. It's not that bad. In fact, there are plenty of great fishing opportunities that are probably right in your backyard. And the nice thing is, this is one of the easiest fishing opportunities you're ever going to get. Easy does it. That's just the way Dave and I like it. Let me start off and tell you that it's spring in central Minnesota. And where we live, the lakes are covered with ice for a big chunk of the year. So when the water opens up in the spring, we are chomping at the bit to get on the water. But first, let me back up a second or two. Last year, before I put my boat away for the winter, I followed a few simple steps to help keep my motor in top performance. Number one, fog the engine. Number two, drain and refill all the lower unit oil. And three, this is the most important, stabilize your fuel. All you have to do is simply pour one ounce of sea foam to every gallon of gas your tank will hold. Fill her up with gas, run the stabilized fuel through the engine for a bit, and this will keep your gas, lines, and tank moisture free all winter long. This will ensure all you gotta do is hit the road, like us, to your guaranteed fishing hole. Guaranteed you might question? Well, nothing's 100% but it's as close as we can get, and the best part is, it's only a hop, skip, and a jump away from town. We get, there's one. You got one? Yeah. Right away? Well, that, that took all of what, 20 seconds, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> they, they really smack it good, don't they? Yeah. Apparently, these are what you like to call biters. Yep. We like that. 
When you're in the business of teaching people how to catch fish, you need to provide anglers with the finest equipment, backed with the knowledge of how to use it. It's all about blending science and technology with hardcore fishing experience and passion. It's a relentless commitment to quality. Because it's family, it's personal, and it's all about catching more and bigger fish. There's a real boy there. Auto stow and deploy, power trim, and your choice of iPilot or iPilot link. <laughs> Altera from Minn Kota. We can't believe it either. There's no place like this. This segment is brought to you by Gill. Respect the elements. There's one. You got one? Yeah. Right away. Boy, that, that took all of what? 20 seconds, maybe? Nice rainbow. Come. That's what we're after. That's what we're after. Back you go, baby. <laughs> I like it. Nearly every state in the U.S. has some type of trout stocking program, and this offers many people angling opportunities on a budget. In many cases, you can easily catch trout from shore, particularly in the spring. In others, a small boat, easily launchable at primitive boat accesses, may be a better option. Strip mines, mine pits, borrow pits, and other relatively small, man-made waters are often top candidates for stocking with trout, particularly if they feature extremely deep water and steep shorelines. Such waters tend to remain cold and oxygen-rich throughout the year, making them ideal trout habitat. Rainbow trout generally predominate in stocking, although other species may be used as well. While trout seldom reproduce in these waters, they don't have to. State fisheries agencies typically pull aerated tanker trucks up to the shore during the cool spring or fall months and discharge large quantities of hatchery-raised fish. The first few days following their introduction, while trout are still becoming accustomed to their new surroundings, the fish tend to remain quite shallow within easy reach of anglers casting from shore or longline trolling lures near the surface in open water. Remember, hatchery raised fish haven't seen lures before and often find the first encounter with anglers to be their last. But that's okay. Fisheries agencies often plan on and encourage the harvest of trout from these waters, since the fish aren't going to reproduce anyway. Thus the term, put and take. They put them in, you take them out. See all that? That's all trees. These little trout are in and around this cover. So we're just trolling over the top of it Oop, there's a little bump right there. I got a fish. You got him? Yep, I got him. Right in those trees. Bingo. 
above the treetops. Above the treetops. Any kind of cover, any kind of collection point, like treetops or even a back corner like this, the corner of the pit, it's a natural collection point for bait fish and for trout. Good places to focus on. Although the fact is these are free roaming fish that can be in open water, they can be anywhere. There we go, Let's see what we got. Aren't they fun? Absolutely. They pull tougher than crappies, don't they? They do. They certainly like to flop, I'll tell you that. Come on, baby. Just want to be as gentle as you possibly can because they are a delicate fish. I'll get that kind of a two-man operation with those little tiny trouble hooks. There we go. They are squirmers. Again, that's another nice little beautiful rainbow. Very pretty colors. Let's keep a couple of these, Dave. I'd like to we're gonna chow them. down. Yeah, we're going to chow down. Go, Dave. There we go. Start the rainbow collection. <laughs> That's funny. Put a mark on that one. We put marks wherever we catch a fish, just so we know the distance between these fish. A lot of times there's loose schools here and there, so it just uh, gives you a little bit of a identifier when you're going to get bit. and where these pods are at. Water temperature is about 49 degrees and the air temperature is colder than that. So a little bit of chill in the air. Nice thing about these pits is they generally have a real high steep shoreline and you can get back on the downwind side of the pit even when it's very windy and get tucked out of the wind. So you got your boat control and you've got comfort. That way it makes them a good place to go on a windy day. This particular area we're fishing has a lot of iron ore pits. You can tell by the reddish brown soil surrounding the area. And they probably were in their major production something like 80, 90, 100 years ago. And back then, when they were actively mining, they would pump any extra water out that was seeping in here. But when the mining operation stopped, the pits began to naturally fill up from seepage oh, from oh, the groundwater. Oh, oh. There's one. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. And that's when our DNR started stocking fish. He's going to leap. Oh. That's what's fun about this, Dave. These fish, you know, crappies don't leap. These guys will come up and go airborne, and by the way, they're real scrappers. <laughs> they're so cool, man. They're just cool. Mercury engine test. Easy to maintain performance you can rely on. It's good to have Mercury behind you. Shadow wrap shad's a jerk bait with a secret move. When you pause, the lure slowly rises. I tell you, man, it makes fish come unglued. He's fished here for decades. He knows every hump, every drop off, every contour. He's dedicated his entire life to understanding this single body of water. And he didn't know squat about it until two hours ago. AutoChart Live lets you build your own high definition maps anywhere in the world in real time. Only from Humminbird. Better go with the swinging rugby jig. I know what to do. Thanks. It's articulated, swinging head. Let soft plastics move naturally and freely. I know. I designed it. Plus, it's got that extra long Z-bend hook that you love. And oh, it's got nice. a hook. Oh, God! Hey, little help here? Oops, I'm sorry. Did you say something? Come on, help me. Turn this bag over. Mercury engine test. <laughs> Smooth, quiet power you can rely on. It's good to have Mercury behind you. 
The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. From seepage oh, from oh, the groundwater. Oh, oh. There's one. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. And that's when our DNR started stocking fish. Got him. Yeah, I'll, I'll get him. Do you want me to get it for you? No, I'll, I'll just flip him in and. Okay. Boy, that is fun, fun, fun fishing. We'll put this guy down here and get a good look at him. All right. Boy, they're squirmy little guys. Got him on that little Rapala. Look at how pretty these little guys are. Oh, man. Boy, they're squirmy. These guys are tough, man. They're tough little fish to catch in the spring like this. They are just a ton, ton of fun. Thank you, Dave. There we go. Look at it, it's like an aquarium. There's one. Oh, that's a, that feels like a good one there. I got a good one. You got one? Yeah. Oh. That a boy. What? That's three fish right now in the same general area. Yep, right on that waypoint. <laughs> Wouldn't that be surprised if I got one? And it may have something to do with it's right off the access road Which where is, they unloaded the truck just a few days ago <laughs> and flushed all the trout into the lake. Uh, Go to where the fish are, Dave. Yes. Don't fight it. Stand out like a little bulldog. Yeah. They really kind of snake fight, don't they? They swirl and... It's up near the surface now. What do we got here? <clears throat> there you go. Yeah. You know, that one felt bigger, but he wasn't. He's actually... This is another nice little one. One more for Daniel's dinner tonight. Got a little hook untangled there, and we're ready to roll. And while we get that out, let's take a quick look at Minnesota's philosophy when it comes to managing their stock trout fisheries and maximizing the amount of fun people can have by catching these all over the state. In those Cuyuna mine pit lakes, the stocking started in the 1980s because um, the mining continued, I think, into the 50s and 60s. And then there's sort of the mining companies abandoned those pits and they started filling up with water in the 60s and 70s, and by the 1980s there was enough water. People were like, oh, we got some new lakes now, so maybe we could throw some trout in there. So that started in the 80s, and there's been pretty much annual stocking in most of those mine pits from the, starting in the 1980s through today. Yeah, that trout stocking has provided angling opportunity for you know different species that you wouldn't have that opportunity to fish for in this area. So we provide the rainbow trout mainly fishery, and some, some brook trout, and occasionally some brown trout fishing as well in those mine pit lakes. Um, you know, anglers need a, a trout stamp to fish for trout in Minnesota, so that provides some extra money for the DNR to raise and, and stock those trout and manage those trout fisheries. So that trout stamp money goes directly towards that trout fishery management. And so a lot of people are coming in the area for that, and then it's expanded to these new mountain bike trails on the tailing pits, or the tailing piles between the pits. And the, the clear water is a really popular scuba diver, so, so an area that was, you know, uh, iron mine pits that aren't too attractive has actually turned into a real recreation opportunity between fishing and boating and diving and mountain biking all all using this former landscape of, from iron mining sort of a, a way to take advantage of a, a previous industrial use of the landscape. DNR has got the role of both protecting natural resources but also providing the opportunity so between stocking programs to provide fisheries and also the accesses and the public land that access those fisheries is sort of the, the other role of the DNR. So it's both protecting and enhancing natural resources and providing the opportunity for anglers and, and everyone else to enjoy the outdoors and take advantage of Minnesota. All right, Dave, get your game face on. I'm ready. You know, as much as Daniel likes to eat these trout, <laughs> there's other things in this pit that like to eat trout too. Yeah. In our area of the country, uh, we've got uh, big largemouth bass in here, some nice smallmouth bass, 
But you know what? We also have really big northern pike, and this would not be an unusual place to catch a 20-pound pike. And guess what they're eating? And you guessed it, trout. You know these mine pits in our area have a wealth of opportunity, not only for fishing, but uh, mountain biking trails. This is like a mecca for mountain bikers. They got trails all over the place back here. Uh, scuba diving is another huge thing that a lot of people do. And the uh, funny thing is, a couple years ago, a buddy of mine were out in a mine pit not too far from here, and we were scuba diving. And I saw the biggest largemouth bass I've ever seen. And that, that wasn't the weird thing about it. The weird thing was, it was an albino, pure white. I don't, that's no lie. I, that's when you're looking around, you're like, where's the camera, right? So, what else do you do with a big hole in the ground besides letting it fill with water and stocking it with fish? Well, back on August 19, 1957, the Portsmouth Mine near Crosby, Minnesota, just a few miles from where we're fishing, was the launch site for Man High 2, the second of three top secret manned flights in a U.S. Air Force balloon project that preceded the space race between the U.S. and Russia. The goals were to see if a manned, helium filled balloon could reach the outer edge of the stratosphere and to study the effects of cosmic rays and zero gravity on humans. The fragile balloon was filled at the bottom of the deep mine where it was protected by the wall like surroundings from being buffeted by winds. And piloted by Dr. David Simons inside a telephone booth sized gondola, the balloon rose to a record height of 20 miles above the Earth, with the flight lasting a total of 32 hours. Barely one month later, the Russians launched Sputnik, and the space race was on. Even though the Russians were first into space with rocket propelled manned spacecraft, the earlier balloon flights proved that pressurized suits worked in space, giving the fledgling NASA space program a leg up on their Russian competition. And it all began at the bottom of a big hole in the ground, which is today 400 foot deep Portsmouth Mine Pit Lake, the deepest lake in Minnesota other than Lake Superior. So this is my crappie slash trout box. You can see I got a little bit of everything in here and at some point in time these trout will bite them. You know, we got some jigging wraps, we got some uh, VMC jigs in here, we got some VMC hair jigs, and then we've obviously got some spinners, which they also like. But this is what we're getting them on today, some Rapala hard baits. And the, the thing I wanted to point out is our depth control is dictated by the size of the bill on the lure. Right now we've got this one. This one obviously would run a little bit deeper than this one or this one. Right now I'm getting them on this ultralight shad, and Dave is getting them on an original Rapala. You know, these two mid-level baits. You know, a little bit later on, these fish may drop down a little bit deeper, and then you'd want to switch to this lure. So it's early in the season, the fish are relatively gotcha. shallow, the water's cold, yep. so we're yeah. using these two lures. But all of them have a time and a place for uh, pan fishing or trout fishing. This is the finest fishing boat I've ever been in my life, and I'm so proud because I'm the owner of this one. As far as fishability with this boat, I'm not limited to one specific type of species. For me overall, it's a fantastic boat. My job is simple when I'm guiding. It's to find fish and to catch fish, and to be successful at it, you need boat control. And Lund boats, they're second to none. It's like I went to the factory, they put me in the seat, and they said, what do you want? And they built it around me. This is a fishing machine. Catch more and bigger fish with Lindner's Angling Edge. AnglingEdge.com has the tools for success, tackle and equipment, adventure destinations, clothing, inspiration, instructional DVDs, and more. Miss an episode? Watch it on YouTube along with cutting edge tips, techniques, and trends. Check out our tactical wear clothing line. Hoodies, buffs, long and short sleeve t-shirts, sunglasses, and a whole lot more. This is your one-stop shop for everything angling. Lindner's Angling Edge, online, anytime. Shadow wrap shad's a jerk bait with a secret move. When you pause, the lure slowly rises. I tell you, man, it makes fish come unglued. We're always looking for a secret to success, like lures, lakes, spots. 
Here's one mechanics have been using for decades to solve fuel system problems. It's Seafoam Motor Treatment. Seafoam helps do the few important things exceptionally well. Removes harmful engine deposits, controls moisture, stabilizes fuel for up to two years and adds lubrication to fuel so engines run cooler and last longer. To me, this stuff is like a miracle in a can. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Right now, I'm fishing with 832 braid, six pound test, with a little bit of a shocker on there of six pound Suffolk Elite. Dave is running six pound Suffolk Elite all the way for his main line. And the bait that I'm running is the Shad Ultralight. Runs a little bit deeper, that's why I'm using that braid on there to get it to its maximum depth. Dave is running shallower, so he's got that mono on there and he's running a little bit higher. So there's a method to the madness for what type of line you're using to what bait. Oh, you got one. Whoa, uh, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, oh, that's a, whatever that is, that's a good one. <laughs> I think we got a barn burner. Ooh, he's snaking. Man, that is so much fun. These fish leap. You know, this is probably one of the most fun times you're gonna have in the spring, going and catching these fish. And they're all over the country. You gotta do a little bit of research and your state's probably loaded up a lake pit or a pond near you. Hey, I wanna take a moment to share with you an email that I just got from a close friend of mine and it's titled 10 Ways to Love. Now I'm gonna put this up on the TV screen so you could take a look at it and follow along with me in case there's particular scriptures that you wanna remember. Number one, listen without interrupting, Proverbs 18. Speak without accusing, James 1.19. Give without sparing, Proverbs 21.26. Pray without ceasing, Colossians 1.9. Answer without arguing, Proverbs 17.1. Share without pretending. Ephesians 4.15. Enjoy without complaint. Philippians 2.14. Trust without wavering. 1 Corinthians 13.7. Forgive without punishing. Colossians 3.13. Number 10. Promise without forgetting. Proverbs 13.12. I really enjoyed that. I just we had to share that with you. I'll tell you what, I'm so thankful that I don't have to face the challenges of the day and the world around us without God's word right next to me. Something that I could stand on and believe in and have seen work in my life. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.